Good evening everybody and welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and click the like like button and I appreciate it very very much. Um, the Republican National Committee, the RNC, joined the North Carolina Republican Party in a lawsuit filed in state court last Friday against the North Carolina State Board of Elections, NCSBE, and six of its officials. The lawsuit centered around a recent deadline extension for absentee ballots issued by NCBSE, as well as guidance issued by the board in 2016 that requires an at-large observer to work as a voting site for at least four hours before they can be replaced. Now the NCSBE continues to undermine the democratic process with unlawful rule making, rule making and further restrict the rights of election observers, threatening the integrity of our elections. Now, RNC Chairwoman Rona McDaniel, McDaniel stated in a September 9 press release, Last month, NC SBE Executive Director Karen Brinson Bell extended the absentee ballot deadline from November 11th through the weekend to November 14th. Now, GOP officials contend that this move violates election law requiring absentee mail-in ballots to be received not later than three days after the election by 5 o'clock p.m. In her decision to extend the deadline to November 14th, Bell cited a state law permitting transactions scheduled to fall on a holiday to be, be performed on the next day government offices reopen. Since November 11th is Veterans Day this year, she extended the deadline through the weekend to November 14th. Well, that's all right. In two, uh, 2016, when Election Day was also November 8th, the NCSBE issued a similar delay. In the lawsuit, Republicans claim that Bell's actions violate the U.S. Constitution which grants each individual state the authority to determine the times, places, and manner of holding elections for senators and representatives. The lawsuit also details the GOP's claim that the NCSBE wrongly imposes restrictions requiring at-large observers to remain at voting sites for four hours before they can be replaced a policy that, according to Republicans, makes it difficult to fill volunteer gaps at the polls. The GOP emphasizes, emphasized the importance of observers in maintaining election integrity. If observers are restricted from actually seeing or hearing important aspects of the election administration process, then they can be left with doubts and cannot assess to accuracy, a test to accuracy, excuse me. The GOP stated in the lawsuit, thus the purposes of election observation are defeated by restrictions that prevent meaningful observations and discernment. The NCSBE sent out absentee ballots last Friday. <clears throat> really? The same day the lawsuit was filed. The board indicated that an estimated 63,000 absentee ballots have been requested so far, with about 13% of them going to registered Republicans and little more than 50% going to registered Democrats. <clears throat> well, I don't know. Seems like there's a little misunderstanding somewhere along those lines. <clears throat> Couldn't tell it by me. <clears throat> Excuse me, I still got a little bit of croup here, but it's going to get better. Uh, I've already did that one about Pelosi, extending House proxy voting. She's doing it to her own benefit. There's no doubt about that. Ron DeSantis solidifying, solidifying Florida as a red state, 
Now, I'm not sure if I have done this one or not, but I know I had it uh, listed. Uh, I hope I haven't done this one. When Florida Governor Ron DeSantis was elected as governor of Florida in 2018, the state had far more Democrat voters than Republican ones. This made such a difference that DeSantis' victory over Florida Democrat Andrew Gilliam was narrow. I've already done this one. I'm pretty sure I have. Yes, I should have taken that off, and I didn't do it. So, let's put that down. Let's see what this one is here. I've got them lined up for you, people. Yeah, I got them lined up for you. Oh, medical group sues Pfizer for discrimination against whites and Asian Americans. That's not good. An advocate... <clears throat> advocacy group composed of medical professionals filed a lawsuit against Pfizer on Thursday for discriminating against whites and Asian Americans in their fellowship program. The advocacy group, Do Not Harm, filed the complaint in a Manhattan federal court outlining what they alleged is Pfizer's radical, diversive, and discriminatory ideology. The complaint alleges that Pfizer violated state and federal civil rights laws in addition to federal health care regulations barring racial discrimination. Racial discrimination demeans us, wrote the group in the complaint, adding that open exclusion of white and Asian American applicants is illegal. In response to the complaint, Pfizer issued a statement announcing that they had every confidence that the company ran its fellowship program in accordance with all employment laws. We will continue to strive to create more opportunity, including through specific programs designed to cast a wide net for talent, wrote Pfizer in the statement. In their complaint, the advocacy group asked for an injunction to prevent Pfizer from using race as a criteria in their fellowship selection process in the future. The complaint also seeks an injunction to stop Pfizer from continuing with their 2023 fellowship selections under the current rules. Now this one I don't get right here. Uh, it's got lastly, the complaint requests one dollar in nominal damages. Does that sound right to you? I was looking for 1,000 or 1 million or whatever in nominal damages. So I'm not sure what that is, but Do Not Harm is based in Glen Allen, Virginia, with members ranging from doctors and other healthcare professionals to policymakers and medical students. The fellowship program operated by Pfizer grants fellows with a two year contract to work in full time positions after finishing school along with fundraising funds funding their master's degree. Pfizer announced goals to enroll 100 fellows by 2025 as part of a nine-year campaign to increase minority representation in the company. Pfizer Chief Executive Albert Brula, B-O-U-R-L-A, Brula, Broler, has high aspirations for the fellowship, saying on the website that it can lead to parity at all levels to create a vibrant culture where every colleague has the opportunities to succeed. Well, that sounds pretty good to me. I don't know. Leave me a comment. Let me know how you feel about stuff. I'm just reading the stuff I've got here. I don't know. And uh, Prime Minister Truss, T-R-U-S-S, promises UK citizens will not bear cost of energy shortage. The United Kingdom's new Prime Minister, Liz Truss, T-R-U-S-S, -S, spoke on Tuesday about rising energy costs, indicating that she would implement a plan to cap prices for businesses and households and citizens would not be asked to ration 
over the winter. Oh boy, I wish they'd do that here. Trust spoke with reporters while in New York attending the United Nationals Nations General Assembly where she is advocating for support for Ukraine. She called global security the number one issue. Truss was careful to emphasize, however, that her citizens should not suffer the financial consequences of supporting Ukraine. It is a price worth paying for Britain because our long-term security is paramount. Paramount, Truss said. What I don't want to happen is for that to be passed on to bill payers beyond that energy price guarantee that I have outlined. I don't think that's right, she added. And truce or trust plan to combat rising energy prices includes an energy price guarantee, which restricts the prices an energy company can charge customers. That sounds good. Mm, keep it low. <laughs> in addition, truce announced a plan to aid businesses in paying for energy costs. And Truce also lifted green levies, extra taxes that appear on customers' energy bills. Wouldn't that be nice? Rather than relying on taxpayer money, Truce said the government will borrow money to pay for the plan, causing some to ponder how much this plan will cost taxpayers in the long term. Well, you always got to think about that. You know, you always got to. Nevertheless, Truce insisted that the number one priority is security. It's right that we cannot jeopardize our security for the sake of cheap energy, Truce said, echoing the sentiments of her predecessor, Boris Johnson. That is the mistake the entire Western world made, she continued. It was becoming too dependent on author authoritarians' regimes, not just for energy supplies, but also for other uh, critical minerals and other goods and so on. What we can't allow to happen is for that cost to go on the bills of people in the UK, she concluded. And also during the interview, Truce made an apparent criticism of past government officials, remarking that they should have been investing more in nuclear power 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know about that, but... Well... China warns U.S. of wrong, dangerous position on Taiwan. <clears throat> I'm not sure about this one. Chinese foreign ministry officials have accused the U.S. of sending very wrong, dangerous signals on Taiwan following a meeting between Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and his Chinese counterpart, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yai. Wang Yi, Wang, Wang Yi, Y I. Sorry if I mispronounce that. Chinese Foreign Ministry officials warned the United States not to meddle in this conflict with Taiwan, calling it an, inter, an internal matter in which the U.S. has no right to interject itself. What have I said all along, people? What have I said? We need to keep our nose to home. Take care of our people. Not everybody else has let them worry about what they've got themselves into. You know, I've said that in so many videos. Oh. The two met for approximately 90 minutes following the UN General Assembly on Friday. After the meeting, YI was cited by China's foreign minister as saying, the Taiwan issue is an internal Chinese matter and the United States has no right to interfere in what method will be used to resolve it. Thanks to Biden, over the past few months, especially since the Russian invasion of Ukraine, tensions between the U.S. and China over Taiwan have e escalated. Well, no wonder. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Biden. Always got to get in my cam when I say that. You better believe it. Many people feared that Russia's attempt to take over Ukraine would embolden E-M-B-O-L-D-E-N, embolden China to do the same in Taiwan. Then in August, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi, oh, don't you just love that lady, made a stop in Taiwan during a trip in the region. She shouldn't have done that. The California Democrat was the highest-ranking U.S. official in more than 25 years, 
to make an official visit to Taiwan. Immediately following the trip, however, China began hosting aggressive military drills near Taiwan and even simulating an attack on a small country. Pelosi insisted that her trip was not a political stunt, nor was it done to upset the statue quo. Chinese officials replied, insisting on going to the island, Pelosi apparently does not care about harming China, U.S. ties, or putting peace across the Taiwan Strait on the line. More recently, in an interview with 60 Minutes, President Biden made a statement that was both strongly in support of Taiwan, seemingly in impose, imposition to the long-standing U.S. strategy and ambiguity on the issue. Biden was asked whether U.S. forces, U.S. men and women, would defend Taiwan in the event of Chinese invasion. The situation that many feel is becoming more and more likely each day. And I, I've already said this. Yes, Biden replied, yes. Signifying that Biden would in fact send Americans into Taiwan to protect it if the situation came down to it. We have no business sticking our nose in other countries' businesses. <clears throat> Excuse me. With the crisis at the border and the Russian-Ukraine war, the Biden administration foreign policy can ill afford to take another hit. With tensions continuing to brew in China, mistakes continually being made here in America, like the one Biden made on 60 Minutes, something has to change quickly. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. My, oh my, oh my. Well, I'm going to look up some more info, and um, I might do another video later. Not sure, but um, I'll see what I can dig up here. But boy, I'll tell you, <clears throat> I, I made a statement. Biden wants to get us killed. How do you feel about it? Leave me a comment. Stay healthy. Stay safe. I'll be back a little bit later. Bye.